In this episode, I am going to be giving you five tips for starting a glamping site. Possibly things you didn't realise that you needed to know, I'm going to tell you so you don't make the same mistakes that we did. Number one is structures. So I just wish I'd done my research into what kind of structures we should have or shouldn't have. Um, so obviously you know you can have bell tents, safari tents, teepees, yurts, domes, shepherd's huts, wooden huts, cabins, A-frames, the list is endless. And we, not knowing anything about glamping, started with our two yurts which I still love, but they are a pain in the bum. You have to take them down, you have to put them up again. There's a lot of labor that goes on with them. The canvases will go green over the winter, hence why you have to take them down, but they'll still go green and have over, even over the summer and have to be replaced. Um, you know how we feel about bell tents. Well, if you've been watching our videos for a while, you'll have seen um, our original seven meter bell tent came down in the wind. Um, we have since bought a five meter bell tent. It comes up and down for different functions, but um, generally I avoid bell tents because we don't have much luck with our exposed site up here. Um, but bell tents work so well for loads of different glamping sites because for one they're not very expensive to start with the initial outlay is like four to five hundred pounds so you can set up like 10 bell tents and be up and running um at the cost of like you know one dome but for me you probably will have to replace them every season they're just not as hard wearing as the yurts and the domes and things like that i personally just for me Domes are my absolute favourite. They can stay up all year round. They've got this sort of plasticised canvas that doesn't go green and, and is really hard wearing. Um, the ones we buy have got an aluminium frame, so they're really light. So um, that would be my pick of structures. However, I know loads of you have shepherd's huts, which obviously you can do all year round, which is brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, think about that, whether you want to be doing them all year round or whether you just want to do the summer season. We just do the summer because it gets too wet up here in the winter. Um, but so pick kind of pick your demographic. Are you going for couples? Are you going for families? And then pick the structure and just think about it really carefully. That is tip number one. So Vicky keeps leaving all of her washing over here and it's getting a bit out of hand. So what I've done is I've actually piled it all up here by the front door and she should be arriving any moment now. And so it'll be quite interesting to see her reaction when she opens the door and it all comes cascading down on her. Is she coming? Yeah, she's coming. Uh, she's coming. Well, you booby trapped us, so we couldn't get in the fridge, so we thought we'd just pile it up there for you. Well, it just needs to be done. This is the problem. How many wa loads of washing have you been doing in the last couple of weeks? Like... Yeah, ma! Yeah, clear! I just, uh, the washing machine is just on 24 hours a day, basically. Well, not in the middle of the night, but... Continual, continual, continual Did washing. So, number two on the things I wish I know about starting a lamping site is the laundry. So at the moment we're not really kitted out for multiple, like this is like four, year, four two yurts and two domes worth of washing. We're not kitted out for that. We've got a big washing machine and a normal tumble dryer. And at the moment we're just trying to do our house washing. So um, this is now in the way. We can't even open the fridge half the time because there's so much washing. So um, yes, be prepared. If you're gonna include bedding, then Lots of people charge extra for it. We don't because we don't like to add in extras, but um, some people charge extra. Some people outsource it, which is what I'm thinking about doing for next year. So getting a laundry company and basically I would just give them this. They take it away, wash it, iron it, and bring it back. Beautifully done. At the moment we do all the washing and all the ironing and it takes hours and hours and hours. So, um, so yeah, don't forget about the laundry. 
So another thing that I wish I'd known or thought about was storage over the winter. So obviously we're seasonal, we finish um, October, like this last weekend we've just finished for the season. And obviously I've got uh, about 14, 15 mattresses to store. Um, I've got all the bedding, I've got all the yurt canvases, and none of this can go in the container because it's all got to be kind of inside, mouse proof, damp proof. So we take over our conservatory. So this is the conservatory. It used to be the kids' playroom. It now is storage. I've just given it a total clear out because there was loads of stuff in here. And this is what is now in my living room. <laughs> it's literally piles of mattresses, piles of sheets, all the bedding right at the back. Um, it's a total disaster. So my project for today is to try and get all the mattresses in here. So I'm gonna go and get them all from up in the domes and the yurts as well. Then I'll stack them all up high here. I am basically squeezing as much as humanly possible into this room. So, <laughs> We basically need to get rid of all of this stuff because I've got 12 more matches to get in here. Okay. So we managed to get all 10 mattresses on Vicky's car. <laughs> this bit here over here is a bit precarious. And as we were driving, we originally had some more over here, but they fell off. So we had to then stick them on the top. And then in the back here, as you can see, we managed to get what's a, four mattresses in the back as well. So yeah. <laughs> How was that driving all those mattresses down? Great yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, we managed to get them all down in one go. Now we just got to trace them all through the house and put them in the conservatory. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. What do you want to start with? We'll have to get the singles. Well, I want the doubles first, but we're going to have to get the singles off. So where do you want to put the singles then? We'll just put them in the lounge. Okay. Well, we best get going then. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's heavy, don't you know? Yeah, it's a bit um, chock a block in here. So, how many mattresses do we have in here now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's not bad going. Oh, you. You do realise that that mattress there is heavily bowing, and those mattresses are all about to come crashing down on top of you. I told her not to take the one that was supporting this. Okay, well, let's put, put another one, put that one. Support that, not that this one. No, that's not going to support at all. That's so squidgy, that one. But it's better than nothing. That's better, isn't it? I am now in the finished conservatory, as in it is chocker block. There are all the mattresses, there's yurt canvases. This is all stuff from the yurts, which has come in here. Then there's some bits and pieces I'm picking up from the new dome because I'm going with this kind of colour scheme. Um, there's rugs and bits and pieces and all the other mattresses. So everything is we can possibly fit in here is in here and the lounge is tidy. Thank goodness. So yeah, don't forget to think about where you're going to store all this stuff. So my next tip is all about OTAs or online travel agents. So obviously you've got your main ones like Airbnb and Booking.com. So we started in year one on listing on those and making sure they spoke to each other so we didn't get any double bookings. We also had our own website and we use a company called Bookalet who allow us to have um, the widget on our website where people can book um, and we can manage all our bookings ourselves. So Bookalet can talk to Airbnb and Booking.com so you don't end up with any double bookings. You've also got things like pitch up, cool camping, glamping hub, they're all the more camping, glamping, more specific um, OTAs. So we started off listing on Airbnb and Booking.com in the first year, and now by year five, we don't list on anywhere. We just get 100% of our bookings direct through our own website, meaning we don't have to pay any fees. So when we're talking about Airbnb and Booking.com, Airbnb tend to pass the service charge onto the guests. So we, you pay a nominal fee as the host, and the guest pays most of the money, whereas Booking.com are the other way around. So Booking.com charge the host quite a lot, but don't charge anything to the guest. So you kind of need to be listed on both, um, I feel, because then you get the kind of maximum amount of exposure for your site. So those are my top tips. If you've got any questions about Airbnb, Booking.com, OTAs, then please leave them in the comments and we will endeavour to answer them.
Number five is rubbish, and I have come to the most unglamorous spot for this tip. Um, obviously, people create a lot of rubbish, um, and actually, you've no idea how much rubbish people create and who start running a glamping site. So obviously, you get a lot of bottles, you get a lot of cans, um, you get a lot of ice cream containers, which ends up being a lot of cardboard, and a lot of food waste. Um, so, I used to literally go through the bins. So I would get a bin down, I'd ask people to separate recycling, but they wouldn't necessarily. So then I would go through sorting out like in between banana skins and like manky bits of food. I'd take out the cans, I'd take out the bottles to try and sort it out into the recycling. And I got to the point last year and I was like, I just can't do this anymore. It's just horrendous. So um, last year was a bit of a write off because of COVID. So I thought, well, I can limp it through last year with the rubbish. But this year, having five structures now, we really, really, really need to sort out the rubbish. So we have gone with a company um, called Devon Contract Waste. So they are a zero to landfill and they basically supply us with these blue bags. So we buy the blue bags on a roll. So they come like this. Um, and you buy them in a batch of like 50 bags. Now they're £2.50 a bag. You also have to pay £39 a year to basically have a certificate to say where your commercial waste goes, um, which is good in itself because you want to be showing that you're getting rid of your commercial waste. Um, so yes, so basically that has halved my workload, but I still go and try and separate the things that go into our household recycling because obviously we've got an allocation of household recycling so we may as well use that and Brian and I don't really drink so we never have any bottles um, so it makes sense just to try and get rid of some of this stuff in the household but this is genuinely the look of the back patio is like rubbish so what I'm trying to do now is work out what goes in to our normal house, our, our household waste and what goes into the Devon contract waste bins because they're being collected at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning so I need to put them out the night before. So um, that is my jolly job now. So that's me sorted for another week. Um, I'm fairly certain that the bin men think I have a drinking problem but they never see me so it's fine. So this works alright for us and managing so far um, but yeah that is rubbish collection. So I really, really hope that was helpful. Obviously, if you're an established glamping business, hit me up with your tips because I'm sure other people would love to read them. And if you think it was helpful, then let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you know how we love our subscribers. And hopefully we will see you again on our next adventure.